Hi students and welcome to today's video lesson for personnel management in 6. Ons gaan vandag klaar maak met hoofstuk 4 waar ons steeds bezig is met leiderskap. Now the last part of module 4 covers decision making and decision making is not only a very important management task but it's also a very critical role when it comes to being a leader. A leier moet besluiten kan neem, hulle moet sekere faktore in acht neem van hulle hierdie besluiten neem and they must make sure that the decisions that they make will contribute to the businesses of um, achievement of objectives. So het is baie belangrijk dat hierdie keeses die rechte keeses gaan wees, maar hy kan ook nie te lang sloer op hierdie keeses nie. Nee. So it is a very important aspect. Factors affecting the process of decision making, daar is twee hoof faktore, hulle praat van die decision making steps and techniques, dus die stappe wat hulle gaan moet volg tijdens besluitneming en ons gaan daarna kyk, as ook die dynamica, the team dynamics more specifically, die type span waarmee jy werk, wat is jou dynamica, hoe werk jy met hulle, what is the influence of these team members and their various roles within the team and how we lead them as well. Ok, so onthou net, hoe groter jou span, hoe baie moeilike raak dit om besluiten te kan neem. En as a leader, remember they believe in participative leadership, wat beteken hulle gaan graag wil hulle leren en hulle volgelinge moet deelneem aan die besluitnemingsproces. But this can be complicated and lengthened if there are too many people being part of the team. Maar kom ons kyk heel eerste na het span dynamica, team dynamics. You can follow with me on page 73, page 73. They say managing the decision making process effectively demands a sound understanding of the various roles that individual members play within the context of a team. Elke span, het verschillende partijen, elke partij, het is vers verschillende rol om te vertolk, based on the norms, rules and structures of that specific team. Okay? One of the ways that this can be achieved is to develop team roles that enhance team effectiveness. So you can see a role that it is also created. Some team members may also in this case play quite a disruptive role. In the level mag he, it can alles wat oor mag en oor um, gesag. And this can have a negative role on the rest of the team and the achievement of objectives. Now, when it comes to effective leiderschap, is it very important that the leader not net effectief is in termen van die bereiking van doelwitte nie, maar dat hulle ook natuurlijk die mense element daarvan in acht neem. And that's what we looked at in the various theories, where we spoke about consideration for people and consideration for results. So it's eigenlijk een baie fijn linkie wat daar gepaard gaan. So some of the positive roles come naturally to individual team members. For example, certain members have a high concern for people and are able to ensure harmony is maintained. Waar aan die ander kant, gaan nie weer die span leren hee wat sê, ah, dit is nie vir my so belangrijk, jy ek wil resultaat hee. So they will disregard the people element at all, and then they'll focus on the achieving results. So hulle sal het enig iemand trap, om daar die resultaat te kan bereik. They say the most effective leaders build on this rich diversity of individual team members. Instead of expecting that everyone has the same idea, or agrees with each other all the time, they value the differences in opinion. And I think that is how the decision-making and the spanne is soms so a long, drawn, uitgereikt story for. Because everyone has an opinion. Everyone wants their piece of the pie. But they want to in the pie direct. To make sure that their stem is heard. And it is important. You want all be together. So the leader must really balance that quite um, effectively. At the bottom of that page, they talk about the positive and the negative roles that individuals can play within a team. Now, come and see how we can have these two different categories of positive roles. They talk about the goal achievers, all the different tools to achieve the goal, and then you have your span bowers. Okay, now remember from the leadership theories, one group will focus on achieving results, and one group will focus on building the team and building the individuals that we have to work with. So it's very important to have these positive aspects to work on. You need a combination of these two to take effective decisions. Now, under goal achievers, we have three types of roles, or actually four. We have initiators, your initiators. They provide new ideas on how to move ahead. So they are the creative ideas that always come with new ideas. Then you have your inlichting seekers. These are the people very good at research. They find information that will help them to solve the problem. Get your integrators, what all the facts by mekaar bring, nie net opinies nie, maar ook die navorsing. And then they also have the energizers that basically get the team moving into action. So daar die vier rolle is baie belangrik vir die span om hulle doelwitte te kan bereik. 
And when we look at the team builders, there's three. We have the harmonizers, you will harmonize this. Hulle help the leader on the conflict to work. Now, conflict is inevitable, we cannot avoid it, but we need to deal with it constructively, and your harmonizers are responsible for that. It work your hackwachters or your gatekeepers. They will stop dominant individuals from overruling the rest of the group. It's very important to work with all the people that you want to say to say. And then we have the expeditors. They seek the most effective ways to implement decisions. So they have to decide how we can use the effective manier to implement it. In terms of the negative roles, we speak about the power seekers, your power seekers. And they can be completely disruptive wees, ook in a team context. We have the blockers. They block every new idea that has been put on the table. So you can give idea and they say, say, ach, no, man, it's a stupid idea, it's not working. Typical blocker, and they break down the morale of the rest of the team. Recognition seekers, of your erkenning seekers, they are the ones that all the time they have to and they have to decide and they have ideas, which can once again um, help cohesion within the team. Your solidarity can be here in the world. And then we have the dominators, where they basically take over the whole process of decision making and they try to influence everyone else to see things from their perspective and to understand and accept their priorities. Okay, so this is verschillende types of macht, by a blanke gedeelte for the exam and that. The last part is on page 74, the 10 steps of decision making. There are 10 verschillende steps. We are going to go to the next one. We are going to go to the Remember how we build a house? We don't start with the roof, we start with the foundation. So when we talk about steps and procedures, it has to be in order. So we know that. The whole first step is you have to the problem and it is going to be in kleiner problem. The only way you can solve a problem is by fully understanding the problem. Okay, so first you understand the problem. Then in step two, you gather and analyze all the relevant data. And this is not your huidige feiten, but also your um, historische inlichting that you can get. In step three, we formulate the real problem in writing. It's actually very snug. So say, soms is the problem not actually the problem. Nie. Soms is the problem a other problem. Okay, now if that's not confusing enough, you need to understand that the problem is not always the problem. Okay, so we have to go to the root of the problem to understand what causes the problem in order to solve the problem that you are experiencing at that moment. So in, in step three, we need to go to in step four, we now develop alternative solutions based on the information that has been gathered. This is about brainstorming income, where all of your opinions here are going to be solved. In step five, we evaluate these alternatives to see which one um, can be considered. We look at the effects of it. We look at what is the impact and the for and the nadelen of it. In in step six, we then choose the best alternative to solve this problem. And then in step 7, we set criteria to evaluate the chosen alternative. So what the criteria we use to bepaal of if this alternative the right alternative is to the problem op te los. In step 8, we look at what is the possible effects of this decision. So when we make this decision, what will be the consequences? Okay, remember action has reaction. Cause and effect. So every decision has an impact and we will bepaal what the impact is. In step 9, we now implement this decision based on all the aspects that we've considered. And in step 10, we will now evaluate the effectiveness of the decision on an ongoing basis. So, we can see that it is not a very difficult and simple task. It can be quite lengthy. You have to take into account all the steps and techniques, but also the various team roles that can influence decision making within the team. Okay? So, this is the end of step 4. In the next video, we'll then start with module 5. Till then, bye!